Welcome to Junior Achievement. My name is Risa and on behalf of JA I'd like to welcome you as a classroom volunteer. Today we are going to explore the JA It's My Business curriculum. This curriculum has been written for an after-school setting, but we often teach it in an in-class setting. So there are a couple things that I want you to be aware of as you move forward. First of all, there are not table tents in which you have the classroom students write their names on it so that you can get to know them. Instead, there are name tags that the students can wear. The other thing that's different is that this program has been written for a 60 minute class period and we know that most of our middle schools have an average of 45 minutes. So please note that there are easy ways to adapt and condense some of the activities such as instead of having the students play the game for 15 or 20 minutes, have them play for 12 minutes instead. So just make sure to watch your time and condense the activities so that you can fit it into your time frame allotted. Some of the materials that you need for this specific first activity is the e-quiz banner, the e-quiz game sheets, and the entrepreneur journal that the students can use at the end. This first activity really allows the students to think about entrepreneurship and big, the big picture of what it takes to be an entrepreneur. You will notice that there is a poster that you can reference throughout all of your activities. And this is a great go-to to keep referencing the four key points of this curriculum. Fill a need, know your customer and product, be creative and innovative, and finally to believe in yourself. You are going to see a theme of going back to those four key characteristics time and time again throughout this program. This first activity opens up obviously with an introduction. Be sure to take some time to talk with the students about who you are and to build that rapport with the students. It's always great to build those connections. You'll notice that the book starts by introducing some key vocabulary terms such as entrepreneurship, business, profit and loss, products and services, innovation, etc. After you share a little bit about these specific vocabulary terms, turn it over to the class and have them share what entrepreneurs they can think of. The book provides some ideas such as Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, KFC, and Starbucks. Then get the students to think about what are the characteristics that these entrepreneurs often have in common and, and challenge their thinking on that. From there, you're going to launch into the actual activity of the day, and it is to play a game quite like Jeopardy. You will notice it's called the E-Quiz Game Show, and you're going to have the students split up into groups of three or four. What you want to do is the book encourages you to allow a few minutes to have the students um, come up with a group name and to have them determine a spokesperson. They also encourage you to have the team come up with some sort of noise making to be able to identify when they have a question. You could also have them signify by raising their hand and ask the classroom teacher to help you keep an eye out as to which team was first. What you'll notice is that in order to set up the game, there is a diagram on the bottom of page 12. You might find that you don't have enough room or enough time to set this up fully in which you would tape this to a board or spread it out on the floor and then to tape the corresponding cards below it. If you don't have time to do that, feel free to tack up the banner and simply write underneath it the numbers so that you can expedite the process and not have to tape so many pieces together. You could then hold these corresponding cards so if they wanted it for 25 or 100 you could just find the card that correlates to it. One thing to note is that the answers are on the back of the cards so make sure that when you're reading the points you're not showing the answer to the students in the front row. Make sure your guidebook or other cards are in front of it so that they don't get the answer given to them off the bat. The way this is set up is that the students are going to have the opportunity to buzz in if they think they know which entrepreneur or business is being represented. There are three different clues that you can read. So what you'd want to do is first start off by reading the first clue and see if anyone wants to buzz in. If they do buzz in and get it incorrect, they need to wait until you read additional clues in order to get to try again. So just keep that in mind. 
Once the students actually respond correctly, they can keep this card so they can add up their points at the end. And if you have time, you could have the students highlight a few of the main points about that specific entrepreneur. Again, that's a piece that you would definitely want to make sure that you have time to do so that it doesn't take too much time away from more of the activity. You might not be able to get through all of the questions and all of the entrepreneurs, but play for as long as you can to make sure that you can cover as many entrepreneurs as possible. What you'll notice is that on the bottom of the game procedure bullets, you will notice a tie-breaking question if you do have um, a tie in your class, so that's a great go-to. And what it's always good to do before you start is to do a practice round so that everybody understands and is in agreement to the the instructions. One thing that you want to make sure that you do is at the end of your time with the students is to make sure you do a summary and review. And there's a couple options in this curriculum. Again, depending upon the format and the time that you have in your class, you can choose to do these or you could choose to condense the program and not use these specific action, um, action items. First of all, you always have a learning challenge. And that learning challenge is going to be stemmed um, from you bringing in just blank pieces of paper or asking the students to use scratch paper. So just know this is not part of the material that is provided for you. But there's always a three minute brainstorm challenge for the groups to do in their small groups. So if you have time, it's a great way to kind of bring the program back together and to allow the students to solidify their learning. So for example, in this activity, the students can spend three minutes listing as many entrepreneurs as they can think of. Really, it's just that rapid brainstorm thinking to kind of get everything that they can on paper. You will also notice that in this curriculum there is an entrepreneurship think tank opportunity and that is where these journals come into place. So if you have the opportunity to send these home with the students, you can have the students brainstorm and think more about their entrepreneur um, ideas using these journals. So again, if you have the opportunity, it's a great way to engage the students thinking outside of the classroom and then they can bring their thoughts back together and you can also brainstorm as a whole class on some of their ideas. Enjoy session one!